Hi guys, or aloha, it's Katie. I am a current sophomore at Cornell University. I got my IB diploma May 2018, so that was one and a half years ago. Since then, I've been getting a lot of questions about the IB, and there's a reason I haven't done it. I don't want to relive it. Y'all know that the IB is a stressful time. I appreciate that part of my life, but I'm not gonna keep doing IB videos for the rest of my life. You know, same thing with college apps. Like, I did all that I could. I passed on all the knowledge that I knew in that time, and now I'm moving on. But we're gonna start with the first question, what is IB? Because I'm sure some of you are confused, but the IB stands for the International Baccalaureate, and it is a high school program for the last two years of high school. You guys might be familiar with AP if you're in the US, GCSEs or A-levels if you're following the UK system. These are all just programs people do in high school to structure their final years of secondary education. The IB is known to be one of the most challenging curricula in the world for high school students. The IB is known to be more difficult because how it works is for two years, students will choose six subjects, three standard level courses and three higher level courses. The higher level courses are more intense, you go more deeply into a subject. I took higher level computer science, economics, and language and literature, or English. Standard level math, chemistry, and Chinese. But on top of that, all students also have to take a theory of knowledge course, which I would describe as philosophy in college, and write a 4,000 word extended essay or research paper on one of these subjects, and also do creativity, action, and service <laughs> requirements to ensure that you come out of this program a very holistic and well-rounded student. This is also reflected in the assessments we do. It's not just one multiple choice test. You can't just pick up the IB like you would for AP tests or SAT, ACT, standardized college tests. You'll probably have to submit many written tasks, do many essays for the final exam, and also do oral presentations and bigger projects that you have to submit for the IB to grade. So that's why the IB is known to be intense because once you sign up for it, you have a lot of requirements. It's not just a one-time thing. Like once you're in, you're invested and you gotta do all these extra things. Now that we've cleared that up, we can start with the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. Okay, so first question is, is IB more stressful than your freshman year? Yeah, IB was more stressful than my freshman year of college. Now, this is because a lot of many different things. In general, when you go from high school to college, you're not going to be babied by your teachers. Everything is much a larger scale. You're probably going to have lectures with professors you could easily never meet if you never bothered to, compared to in high school where you're in a much smaller class and your teacher actually knows you. Another big thing is once people go to college, their priorities change a lot. In high school, I think there's a lot of pressure because it's all about getting into college and you need these IB scores and all these tests. You need to do well in these tests to get into a college. But the thing is, after college, it's job search. Whatever can financially sustain you. So people's priorities are different. There's not as clear a way to get a job as there is a way in high school to get into a college through applications. First things first is my freshman year wasn't as stressful because I wasn't prioritizing academics as much. And that's because I feel like in high school I already super invested myself in academics and I still did extracurriculars and other stuff but in college I didn't want to get holed up in all these tests anymore. I really wanted to try different things and explore myself because after college I'm gonna get thrown into the real world and if all I know how to do is take tests that's not gonna benefit me as a professional in the world and oh my gosh I'm gonna have a meltdown thinking about adulthood. Did you get any credit at Cornell for IB? I mean you got a 45. A 45 is the highest score you can get in IB. I think that's another reason a lot of people have been asking me to do this video is because I happen to do well in the IB program. And I think only 0.5% of candidates, and there are like hundreds of thousands of candidates, if I'm not mistaken, who get a 45. So this is supposed to be my, you know, credentials for why you should listen to me. But again, like I'm only one opinion. This is my experience. It's different for everybody. But the thing with Cornell University, which is an Ivy League university in America specifically, is that I could only get credits for my higher level courses. So that means the maximum credits I could get were three. And that is not a lot compared to people who took AP, which is an advanced placement test that a lot of high school students in America use. And there were a lot of students, like people who've taken, I don't know, 15, 16 APs here, 
who have been able to get five times as many credits as me just because they use the American system and that makes sense because you do an American system in high school and then you proceed to an American university. It builds up. The IB is started by European organization and now it's a global program but because of that it wasn't as easily converted to an American university because it's not the one they more directly recognize if that makes sense. So I at least got credit to skip the introductory computer science class and I got four credits for that which is the equivalent of one class and then I also got credit for economics which I got six or seven credits for because it included micro and macro so that's two classes and then language and literature because I got to skip the first year freshman writing seminar which most people have to take two of but I only take one because I had done well in English and I believe you had to either get a six or a seven in these courses for it to translate into college credits I'm just saying beware if you're doing the IB and you're planning on applying to a US university chances are that the IB won't go as far in terms of credits than AP tests will. Again, I think the IB experience should stand on its own and it shouldn't diminish just because certain universities don't recognize it as much. Eunice asks, how did you get a 45? I actually did an entire series on this. What is the main difference? So I wrote down all these notes yesterday. I used to write my notes on my phone and laptop, but recently I can't do screens. Side tangent, I've been reading a book, Digital Minimalism, and it talks about how technology is ruining our lives. And I know people make the argument for utility that, oh, no, technology is like helping us connect with people more and it's more convenient, blah, blah, blah. And I totally get those arguments. But on the flip side, it's not about utility, it's about autonomy and how we are losing that control over our phones and how once we go on, how we are so glued to our phones because all these apps that we're using are literally engineered to be addictive. So we keep coming back because they capitalize, they make their money based on our attention to that app. And that's why we live in an attention economy and I don't want to give my phone any more attention so I gave it to my notebook. Anyway, that was a side rant. I feel like that's one of the biggest advantages I think IB has helped me with is critical thinking and being able to evaluate different arguments and come up with solutions from different perspectives with the goal of creating a discussion, not an argument or debate. IB versus college. Oh my gosh, the biggest change for me is that college, you have to do so many readings. For homework, a lot of them, if they're a non-STEM course, then it's just a lot of readings. And in IB, the only reading I did was for my language and literature course. This is different in IB because I feel once you have a task, for example, for economics, I had to write four papers analyzing different articles. For those, I had to do a lot of research. Oh my gosh, extended essay. That took so much research and just <laughs> so much self-studying. In IB, I slept a lot less and I could still survive a lot of exams. Whereas in college, I need to sleep a lot more. The content in college is harder, but you have more time. In IB, content is much easier. They literally tell you every learning outcome you need to know in your syllabus, and it's just a matter of memorizing, but you don't have as much time, I feel. So those are the biggest difference I've found. Do you feel as if the IB has paid off, or what are some invaluable lessons doing the IB has taught you? So the first thing is, I already told you about critical thinking, but the second is essay writing. In the IB, you do so much more writing than, let's say, someone doing AP because in the AP test you just do multiple choice questions you know the answers are laid out for you you just have to choose it whereas in the IB a lot of our tests were essays we had to practice all these essays and for our assignments for our IAs or internal assessments we had to submit essays and papers and all that writing has really unknowingly helped me and the reason I know this is because number one I got to skip my freshman writing seminar and number two the classes I have done best in have all been English classes. Isn't that kind of weird? Like, I did well in my freshman writing seminar, the one I had to do, and then I took a creative writing class and I did well in it. And then for a behavioral economics class, I took for the final paper, I had to write an essay and I did well on it. And that is about the highlight of my college career so far. Continuing off that, IB really helped me with communication. So not just written, but also orally. I think communicating, like you see me with all my hand gestures and everyone's like, body language. The more hand gestures you do, the more engaging you are. And IB we do a lot of presentations live. We had to do recorded assignments and recorded final assessments. So all that preparation and training for speaking carried on to college. Communicating is a skill that I think has helped me get in all the clubs I applied to, like to pitch myself. If you're explaining, if you need to help a friend and explain a concept, 
IB helped me break down my thought process and make it understandable to somebody else because when we were presenting in IB, teachers would always say, you know, pretend your audience is someone who has no idea what you're talking about. Pretend you're talking to like an eighth grader and make this topic digestible for them. Should I take math HL? Okay, my tips for choosing your IB subjects is based on two things. Number one is what you think you're going to go into in college. So I was actually debating computer science or economics when I was in high school. So that's why I chose both of those. The second thing is to choose subjects you're passionate about or that you care about. And for me, that was language and literature. Since I was very much in YouTube and branding, marketing, whatever, I felt like communicating it was a very important skill. And I say to do it like this because number one, when you're applying to colleges, studying a course, especially at the higher level, is going to show that you are genuinely passionate passionate or curious about this subject. Number two, the subjects you care about are the ones you're just gonna naturally be motivated to study for and in IB, if you choose a subject you think colleges will like or you think will look good instead of something you actually want to learn, you're gonna find that studying for those two years is gonna be so difficult and you're gonna be spending so much more time on it than is really necessary and if you're really all about that college then these things are going to matter especially if you're applying to u.s university for uk i know they want to see you like really involved in that specific field of study so if you're going for that then maybe you try a different approach but those are my two cents there are actually a difference in subject selection so in ib you stick with the six classes you have for four years then in college you do five six classes in one semester so half a year yeah some people say that one unit in ib that usually takes one month to teach in school becomes like one week in college so college really like pushes a lot of information down your throat fast and you're expected to do all that learning on your own nobody's gonna babysit you difference in grading systems IB uses a seven scale so the highest you can get is a seven and the worst is I guess technically a zero if you don't even try but normally it's three is a failing grade and I think four is like a C I would say is college harder than IB someone answered it perfectly tbh college is more difficult in terms of content but you do have more time to complete everything that's very true conceptually yes college is harder and problems are harder you're probably going to go into an exam and not know how to even approach the problem but in ib it's pretty clearly spelled out to you especially if you do all the past papers there is a limited number of things you can do to get to the right answer in college i feel it's so abstract you never really know what you're gonna get and it's not as clear cut of a syllabus in ib because ib you had like bullet points for every objective you need to know in college they only tell you the general mission statement or summary everything is fair game in college and that's also why i don't spend as much time studying it's because it doesn't help me go as far in college because i don't know what the final goal that i'm working towards is because they could hit me up with a random question that i would never have thought of studying for and I would still not get it whereas in IB I know what I need to know and I can work with that which requires more time studying slash research time another person said IB prepares you for long essay writing but not the college workload and time management a lot of people ask me does IB workload and time management skills transfer onto college workload yes I think it transfers but time management I will have to say no for me because I think what is more important is your flexibility and your willingness to adapt to whatever environment you're in. It's not about like just mastering a time management skill in high school and expecting that it's gonna work for the rest of your life. You're gonna have to come up with something completely new in college because there are so many different factors. A lot of things change. Like you are living on your own now. You have different faculty relationship. College is a different beast and you're gonna have to come up with a different time management skill. What's important is that you have the same mindset in IB that you believe you can overcome anything that you are willing to adapt you keep an open mind that I think is what's gonna benefit you just be aware of when it's important to do well in something or why it's important to do well in something and then reflect on that in your own life the most important thing to take away is know that people are doing different things there is no one-size-fits-all approach to life and that's something in IV I definitely was like there has to be one solution to this and my teachers would always be like no, like you need to open up your mind. Like not everything is that straightforward. And I think that's something I'm learning in college is to be more open-minded. How to keep your sanity and how to stay stress-free in IB. Again, check out the Hi I Got a 45 video because I really just talk about mindset. But to wrap it up, in terms of mindset, you shouldn't make IB as big a deal as everyone seems it is. Or in general, if you have a challenge or something you wanna accomplish, you cannot make it seem like a very daunting task because to you, that puts you in a worse position if you see your task as something bigger than you are. You 
know you have to put it in the grand scheme of life and scale it down so that you feel like you can overcome it and once you feel like you can do something more easily you are more willing to accomplish it will your ib score affect your chances of getting in college in the uk i believe it will because you have conditional offers where they will accept you if you get a seven in this subject, a six in this, like they will lay it out very clearly what you need. So it is very important in the UK. Whereas in the US, I think there is more flexibility with that. Obviously what matters is you need to submit your predicted grades because you're gonna take the IB presumably in May and college offers come out April. So you submit your predicted score temporarily and the college will use that to make their decision. That said, it's not like you can just blow off your IB because Colleges are gonna expect you to uphold your academic standing. So if you drop your score by like five or six points, then I have heard from friends before who have gotten warning emails from their colleges or sometimes offers rescinded because of it. Not to scare you or anything because I don't think it's super common, but you shouldn't just blow off your exams because you got in. And last question, do you think having an IB diploma over a regular diploma helped you get into college? I will say yes, and it is because colleges look for students who challenge themselves given what resources are accessible to them and they want to see a student make the most of what they're given because they want students to go to their college and do the same you know make an impact in that community if IB isn't offered to you though don't worry at all that is not your fault at all if you aren't able to access an IB school or AP school or one of these special programs. The admissions will understand but if you are offered these opportunities then you should take them to show that you are trying to challenge yourself and better yourself through hard tasks because that's just a lifelong skill that's important. I hope that you strive to improve yourself every day by doing things that scare you and challenge you because you know that at the end of it you're gonna come out of it a stronger person. That was so long. My camera's gonna die very soon so let's wrap this up. If you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up. If you still want me to do any more IB videos then please comment it. Maybe I will do them. Really I do want to support you guys. I thank you so much for all your support with me throughout these years and I really wish you the best in IB. I really think you can do it, but you just have to believe that you can too and I promise everything will work out. It's not as bad as you think. Make sure to follow me on social media at lowkdx. Let's keep in touch. I'm only a DM away on Instagram. I will see you next week with another new video. Bye guys. Best of luck.